Hi, this is Russ Anderson. In this tutorial, we finally reached the final assembly stage. And we'll start just by recapping. We started out with the footage that was kindly supplied by the folks over at 360 Heroes, who made the camera rig that, that shot this. And this footage is stabilized on the vehicle that's holding the camera. And there's some rod that's holding the camera out in front. And you know, as a result, you see the horizon line shifting around and the sun slowly moving. So the first thing that we did with that in Synthize was to produce the stabilized version that you see here, where now you see the sun is always in the same direction and the horizon line is nice and level. And the advantage of this kind of presentation is that the viewer, when they look in a given direction in the real world, they're always seeing that same direction in their virtual world as well. And I think that's a, a valuable aid to the user's understanding of what's what in that environment. But we did sh show that there was an artistic decision that you had available that you could change that to show, have the camera follow along with the path as well. But this is the fully stabilized version here. So after that, we went and started building up some additional layers. And each of those layers was sent from Synthize to Blender, rendered in Blender just generally as a pure, regular kind of shot, not as a 360 VR shot. And then that conventional footage was brought back into Synthize and converted back to a 360 VR format. We did show once that when your 3D app has a 360 VR camera, you can take advantage of that as well. And we, we did that in the one portion with Blender as well. But as a result of this process, we did build up a collection of layers. And we can start stacking them up down here. You can see first off there's that building that we've put into the scene. And we also created the shadow for it. So we'll, we'll put that into the scene as well. And we'll put that underneath the building so it doesn't step on top of it. And a couple other things. We've got off in the distance, we've got a little synthized label. We talked about stabilizing that. And a couple other little bonuses that again have just made their way from synthize to blender and back for rendering. We've got a plane flying by with the 360 Heroes logo on it. And we've also got a hot air balloon. So we've got you know, a little bit of a crowded airspace going. I don't have that right. I want the balloon behind the plane. That corresponds better to reality. So, you know, that's our initial stack up. And the next part of the compositing process here is to go and adjust each of these layers to better sit in the scene itself. And that was why we rendered the shadow individually and the building so that now we're able to go back in. And for something like the building, we can go and bring up a levels adjustment for it. And this is a little, or maybe even a lot, quick and dirty. We'll just bring this down to some much lower levels. And we'll also make it a bit on the redder side here. The building, we're really looking at the back side of the building that's in shadow. So it's, it's illumination is just coming from this other side, uh, part of the environment indirectly. So we do something like that. For the shadow layer, here what we need to adjust is actually the opacity. We're going to bring the opacity down so that you get the shadowing effect, but you can still see through to see what's underneath it. Similarly, 
for the mountain, we're going to go and just change its levels a little bit so that it's not quite so incredibly dark. And we probably also, since it's so far away, we'd expect it to be just a little blurred out. So maybe we'll just blur it slightly. So certainly not any claim or attempt that this is the world's best uh, approach to this. I'm just trying to give you some idea of the things that, that people do. You know, we got people with a lot of backgrounds coming into these tutorials. So uh, this isn't supposed to be a compositing lesson. But uh, on, a, on larger objects also, we probably would want to worry about the noise level and actually intentionally add some noise to the images just so that they don't look too incredibly digitally clean. That that's generally a giveaway as well. Now one thing that you don't see here is that uh, at one point the the building eventually passes behind the ultralight, but in fact, it still sits on top of it. Um, here I need to do a little roto work on the edge of the uh, two passengers, the pilot and the passenger here in the ultralight, and I haven't done that. There, there, there are actually some, some ways to do that using uh, stabilization effects inside a synthesizer where you stabilize the people right here and then you can get away with a roto mask that really changes very little and then you anti-stabilize it to get the mask back to match up with the original imagery uh, we won't do that whole thing there and you know after you do that then you have to composite it all in in, in after effects but that's that's kind of outside of the scope of the whole thing but the the overall point of this is that just that we, we bring in all these layers, we've, we've rendered them all out individually in our, composite, in our 3D applications, and as necessary, you synthesize to convert to and from the 360 VR format from a regular linear camera. And then we can just use a regular compositing application to do this, even if it doesn't support the 360 VR capabilities. We're just doing straight 2D compositing here to do this. So, you know, over time, you know, we'll get more and more 360 VR capabilities in the various compositing apps and can take advantage of those directly. In the meantime, you can still get things done. Now, what I like to point out, if you go and you look at these images as they come out, you'll see that the, the, the insertions aren't anywhere near as solid as they would be with the normal regular camera and 3D tracking. And the issue here is with the 360 VR cameras, you know, that's an assemblage uh, anywhere from a half a dozen to a dozen or more individual cameras. And in fact, here you've got GoPro cameras with fisheye lenses. So just the calibration of those lenses individually is an issue, let alone when you try and combine them all together just to make life interesting. They aren't actually genlocked together. They're running out of synchronization, so there are timing errors between them. And of course, they are CMOS cameras, so you have rolling shutter effects. And in fact, in this shot, if you look carefully, you can see a jello effect going on throughout it as a result. So as, as a re result of all of that, it means that you're doing your 3D processing over a, a wide area of the image that's up close and personal is, is doing different things in different parts of the image and you're kind of taking results that average that out to produce the 3D results that you're accustomed to. But as a consequence, things stick a little less well when you look at any particular area. And in the previous section, number 11, I showed a technique to mitigate using you know, the entire image for 3D and, and just a local tracker for local stability. And that's, that's what was used for this logo in the back there. So 
that's that's one approach to, to try and mitigate that. Over time, presumably, people will get all these rigs uh, better connected and calibrated and so on. Hopefully, they'll get them all genlocked together. And, and some, you know, obviously, higher-end rigs are more apt to have that at this present time already. So the point to all of this really is just that despite all those issues and where we are right now is still you can go and take the tools that you have. You can use Synthize. You can use your 2D applications for compositing. Put them all together and do some actual stuff with uh, 360 VR that's kind of cool that people won't have expected to see. And you always want to take a look at the final result in your 360 VR viewer in order to be able to understand how it's come out. And so all of this has then finally been rendered out and posted online. You can look at it. It's up there on YouTube as a 3D thing so that you can use Google Cardboard to take a look at. So I hope you found that all educational and are able to take advantage of it to do some real cool stuff. Thanks for watching.